Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. This video shows secret about Manhattan terrorist. Watch before deleted. The man that shouted Allahu Akbar before hitting several people in New York City today had a Florida driver's license in Tampa. This is where some of the state's most radical mosques are located. Check out a brutal attack carried out by a man named Mr. Osmakak as he headbutted a Christian street preacher named Anthony Capo. Tampa has been known by security experts as the location of radical Islam in America. The man in the video above was convicted of attempting to use a weapon of mass destruction near Tampa. He may go to the same mosque as the terror suspect in Manhattan today. He went to the Dar es Salaam Mosque is also known as the Islamic Society of New Tampa, Isnet. Share this before the media covers it up. This guy got into the country when Obama was president. Get this out there. After NYC terrorist attack, Jake Tapper said something unforgivably disgusting. CNN has bit of a bias problem, anyone who has watched the network in the Trump era can attest to that, but Jake Tapper just went way further than anyone before him. Tapper's comment wasn't just liberal. It was insane. In the aftermath of the terrorist attack in New York Tuesday morning, Tapper praised the phrase Allahu Akbar. This wasn't just poor timing, either. He literally said it in response to the drug attack that left at least six dead. The Arabic chant Allahu Akbar, God is great, sometimes said under the most beautiful of circumstances, the host began and too often we hear of it being said in moments like this. As an American, in what context has Tapper heard Allahu Akbar in moments of beauty? How often has he reported on that phrase separate from a terrorist attack? The answer to that second question is probably never. Tapper is just using this moment to try and protect the Muslim community. The left refused to acknowledge the religion's deeply troubling toes to radical extremism, so they spout idiotic and insensitive garbage such as this. Maybe Tapper is right in theory, but why now? Why do the left refuse to condemn radical Islamic extremism without qualification? This isn't a time to find beauty. We must find the problem and identify it. Comment shame on Tapper share if you think Tapper's comments were inappropriate. We need to get tough on terror, not try to find beauty in it. Immediately after New York terror attack, Trump unleashed the Halloween horror. Trump is unleashing the Halloween horror on terrorists. After the Manhattan terror attack today, Trump is not messing around. An Islamic jihadist killed eight people and injured several more. Trump gave the order. He ordered the Department of Homeland Security to strengthen its extreme vetting program. I have just ordered Homeland Security to step up our already extreme vetting program. Being politically correct is fine, but not for this, tweeted President Trump. Details have emerged about the terrorist at this point. He immigrated to the United States under President Obama in 2010. He is 29 years old and was a Florida resident. According to NBC's Tom Winter, a note was written by Saipov pledging his allegiance to ISIS. Share this if you think that we need to have extreme vetting in this country. It's very damn simple, y'all. If you don't want terrorists in the country, then don't let them in. God bless and protect the United States. Tom Paris' sick response to dossier funding will have Americans everywhere fuming. Democratic National Committee Chairman Tom Perez gave his first national press conference since the Washington Post, and it was about as bad as anyone would expect. First, Perez took the line the Democrats seemed to be defending the Fusion GPS dossier was totally justified opposition research. 
Opposition research is not simply something that ought to be done, it would be malpractice not to do it. When reporters asked more about the DNC's role in funding the Fusion GPS dossier how much money was spent, which DNC employee interfaced with Fusion GPS, who authorized the payments Perez gave no definitive answers. Despite apparently having no answer, Perez told reporters that he has not ordered an internal investigation into the matter within the DNC. And then, true to form, Perez went on to say the Trump campaign was the one who had colluded with Russians. We know that we were hacked by the Russians at the DNC. We now know from yesterday that Trump and the Russians were in regular contact. They weren't getting together to trade vodka recipes. They were getting together to affect the outcome of the race in 2016. It continuously amazes me how Democrats can cry foul over Donald Trump Jr.'s 10-minute meeting with a Russian lawyer that produced no information, yet staunchly defend spending millions of dollars to produce a dossier loaded with information from a variety of Russian sources. Share it out if you're sick of the DNC's BS. HT Daily Caller This Muslim just has it all to tell the truth Mayor de Blasio's role in attack today. Top Imam Tahiti revealed that he warned New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio that the city was breeding ground for Islamic terrorists. About hashtag NYC terrorist attack, I personally sent letters to Mayor de Blasio online and in person about terrorist breeding in NYC. He did nothing. In 2016, I told Mayor de Blasio that I was in NYC and noticed some hot radical centers. I was willing to point out serious cases. Ignored. Not only am I a Muslim imam who understands the threat of Islamic extremism, I also hold a certificate in counterterrorism. Now what? Koma said Imam Tahiti. It looks like Bill de Blasio really dropped the ball here. What do you expect? He is a Democrat. The terrorist's name was Saiflo Saipov from Tampa, Florida. He was of Arab descent and is a Muslim. Here is his pic below. Share this to expose Bill de Blasio. We need to get this out there. The entire Democratic Party thinks that terrorism is a joke and that's scarier than anything that you will see this Halloween. We need to make America terror-free again. Lawrence O'Donnell's jaw hit floor with jealous thud when seeing Laura Ingram's debut ratings. Lawrence O'Donnell and his anti-Trump act was getting tired. For most people. Not die-hard liberals who worship at the altar of MSNBC. And besides their hero Rachel Maddow there is none they like better than her sidekick Lawrence O'Donnell. No one heard of these two before Trump's historic win and they took the opportunity to do but eject a liberal base for fame and fortune. Look, no one knows what will happen with Bob Mueller. But to any viewer of Lawrence and Rachel, Trump is already convicted and impeached. That is the problem with duping liberals, when the lies are exposed and the dreams don't come true they will turn on each other and there is nothing sadder than when liberals turn. Which brings us to the one woman who relishes exposing liberals, Laura Ingram. She is a killer of liberal dreams and she just did it again. The ratings for the first night of her soon-to-be-hit Fox show, The Ingram Angle are in and she just wiped the anti-Trump smirk of Lawrence's face and made Don Lemon weep like a baby. Laura Ingram crushed them both. Badly. According to The Wrap, Ingram got 3.27 million viewers overall. MSNBC's last word with Lawrence O'Donnell got crushed getting only 2.6 million viewers. While over at CNN Don Lemon was weeping like a baby after only mustering 1.34 million viewers. The king is dead, long live the queen. Share if you agree. Sarah Sanders' epic response to race-baiting CNN reporter just set the internet ablaze. Another day. Another journalist with a round-trip ticket on the pain train via Sarah Huckabee Sanders. The leftist media basically had a collective hernia on Tuesday after General John Kelly made a remark about the Civil War. Here is the entire quote. 
Robert E. Lee, was a man that gave up his country to fight for his state which in 150 years ago was more important than country. It was always loyalty to state first back in those days. Now it's different today. But the lack of inability to compromise led to the Civil War. Okay, clearly Kelly was not talking about compromising on slavery. He was talking about putting love of state over love of country. And here, he's right Virginian Robert T. Lee was conflicted about which side he fought on, but decided to fight for the Confederacy when Virginia succeeded. Needless to say the media and leftists everywhere decided to take his quotes out of context in order to make him and the rest of the Trump administration look like they're waxing quixotic over the antebellum South. Reporter April Ryan for CNN decided to take the battle directly to Sarah Sanders during her press conference on Tuesday, asking, Does the administration think slavery is wrong? Sanders had the perfect response, nothing. Sanders totally ignored this horrible, disgusting question. Ryan took this as a good sign, for some reason. The way the left twists words to feed their own hysteria is truly astounding. There is no depth they will not sink to. It goes without saying that slavery is wrong and that all modern, sensible people condemn slavery unequivocally. That leftists are sullying our national discourse with this nonsense shows how desperate they are for any political capital or moral high ground. Luckily, Sarah Sanders didn't take the bait. H.T. Washington Examiner